James Rudyard here from Short Game Secrets. Just a, a brief case study that I mentioned last week. This is a player from my trip to Denmark. Professional player, came to a day hosted by Kenneth Hansen. Um, he's a very good guy to know in Denmark. And we had a few players just hit a few short shots around the green. We are measuring it on track man, just see what's going on. And the before and after improvement was just too good to not share and explain briefly uh, without going into too much detail, I hope. Okay, so we've got the before and after. You can see the launch angle's a little high on the left, 83.5 versus 21.8 on the right. The carries are fairly similar, a yard or so apart. And then the big difference is spin rate. So this player said, I struggle to spin the ball and get it to check around the greens when I need to. 1500 RPM of that carry is not going to get it done. It's going to release out. Doubling to 3000 is going to get somewhere close and the ball's going to start to behave when it lands. So what happened? What changed? Well, two big factors, two key factors changed here. First of all, the loft delivered at impact changed. Okay, first of all, the loft delivered changed, so the shaft lean was reduced, and that would serve to increase the spin loft to a point where spin is going to get closer to maxing out. And the second thing that changed, and probably the more important from the two, in my opinion, is the contact point on the face. Okay, so the left video, I'm going to run it through to impact, and you see where the contact point is. And you can see how much shaft lean is delivered into the ball. Fairly large amounts. We've got it we've got just before impact, just post impact, so not quite. So there's gonna be a little bit of a change there. And because he has a fairly significant amount of shaft lean, and then contact points on the face, if I just bounce it backwards and forwards a little bit, is fairly high. You can actually see the face start to open and lay back a touch. Okay, it suggests to me that's a pretty high contact point. And uh, the spin rate would support it and the launch angle would support it further. So what happens when the contact point is too high? Friction lowers. Okay, friction is going to lower. The maximum friction you're going to get between ball and club is going to be right near the bottom where it's not quite thin. And as it moves up, that friction reduces. Okay, and that combined with a lot of shaft lean and a lower spin loft means low spin. Okay, so what was the solution? Well, you can see it set up on the right. We've taken some shaft lean out. I've actually changed club. It's gone from 56 degree to 60 to instantly get the spin loft up to a point where I think it would be more useful. And then the technical change is going to be maybe a little bit of a surprise, maybe counterintuitive to some, because this player has created the style on the left through the desire to not hit the ball heavy, which, ironically enough, he still continues to do, doing it in this way. Okay, So he has reduced his wrist action. It's the standard answer. I'm hitting it heavy. Well, take your wrist out of the shot. Well, what if it's not the wrists? Okay, personally, I consider the wrist to be very useful and very helpful, especially when it comes to controlling contact points on the face. The thing is, when you take the wrist out, as in the swing on the left here, you can't have the club head overtake hands on the way down at any point until long after the ball's gone, really. And then you end up presenting more shaft lean. The leading edge gets sharper, the bounce gets reduced. And that margin of error that you're trying to build in by having a no wrist swing uh, is eaten into heavily by these other variables that people don't really consider. Okay, so what was the solution on the right? Like I said, we took the shaft lean out at a dress. And I actually asked him to use his wrists much more. Okay, The intent on this shot was to, in fact, have the butt of the club. It's a, it's a drill as much as anything. Get the butt of the club to feel like it's actually traveling towards target on the backswing. Okay, now if you get anywhere near doing this, and you won't because the left shoulder is going to move back, the right shoulder is going to move up, and that's going to actually make the club want to move backwards anyway. Right? So it's kind of unavoidable, unless you contorted yourself in some kind of crazy way. So the intent here is to ensure that the butt of the club doesn't have far to travel, to get back in the region of the golf ball. Okay, if it doesn't have to travel far to actually get to the point where it's useful, then you can start to uncock your wrist really fast. And okay, what happens when you start to uncock your wrist? I'm not just talking uncocking either, I shouldn't say that. It's actually a turning of the lead arm. It's a flattening of the right wrist, and there's some uncocking of the left wrist. So there's lots of angles that you create on the backswing that are being undone through impact. And what does undoing this do? Well, it releases the shaft. Okay, so the shaft goes from having a potential for lots of forward lean, the angles are being undone as fast as he can right now, and he ends up removing almost all the lean by impact, just as a very small amount. What does less lean do for your contact point? It moves it lower on the face. What does lower on the face do to your friction? It increases it. Too low, obviously it's thin, it's going to shoot out. Friction isn't going to be very good, it's not going to work. But it lowers it to the point where you will get maximum spin and maximum control on landing. Okay, so if you want to really start to encourage uh, your motion to use the bounce, shall we say, to actually release the angles, you need to create some on the backswing. Don't be scared of using your wrist on the backswing. 
Um, it's like seeing some kind of death move. It's far from it. It's helpful. The more you use them, the less hand travel there is. You don't have to move your arms as far, which is good. You also start to engage the bounce. You actually start to shallow things through the ball. There'll be no digging. It's all good. The very worst that can happen is the ball may come out a little bit low, a little bit hot when you don't quite get it right. If you don't release the angles quite enough, you might drive the ball forwards a touch. But you then train yourself, and this took a couple of balls to release the shaft. I and mean, look where the shaft is now compared to the other video. If I just move the butt up to the same spot, the shaft still hasn't overtaken the hands. Not even close. What chance has this player got of presenting a good spin loft to the golf ball? Very, very little. Okay, so crucial lessons here. Contact point, lower on the face is good, too low would be no good. Shaft lean, taking it out will help you to get the correct kind of spin loft to get the most friction. We found that to be between 50 and 55 degrees. Okay, quite a lot of spin loft there. Spin loft, remember, is the difference between attack angle and dynamic loft. Okay, very, very simple. Okay, those two factors will get you spinning the ball much more. And for me, the crucial me uh, crucial message here, sorry, is that using your wrists is not a no-no. I think it helps. I think it actually increases your margin of error if it's done correctly. Okay, less less butter the club travel on the way back means you can uncock the wrist as fast as you want on the way through and not worry about fatting it. This player will never fat the ball again as long as he lives. If he starts to do this in his game day in day out, won't be a problem. Okay, the results. These are a couple of balls apart, but dramatic. It was instant. He went through the rest of the day chipping great. So go to the range, go to the shipping green, give it a go.